press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. When NASA astronauts went to the moon in the 60s and 70s as a part of the Apollo missions, including Neil Armstrong, they placed a number of instruments on the lunar surface. Four of these instruments were seismometers. These are instruments that are designed to measure earthquakes on Earth and on the moon, moonquakes. When we received the initial data from these instruments in the 70s, we were astounded. We recorded over a thousand lunar quakes. Most of them originated from deep within the lunar body, but some of them originated just within 200 kilometers of the surface. Understanding and interpreting this moonquake data has been very difficult to say the least. While our current knowledge of the moon does allow us to explain possibly why there are quakes originating from the interior of the moon, it has been very hard to explain why there were shallow quakes that originated in the crust itself until now. To understand better the phenomenon of these moonquakes, we need to remember two things that we already know about the moon. The first is that the moon is shrinking. This is because when the moon formed, it was hot just like any other body. The moon also has a core, a mantle and a crust just like the earth and other rocky bodies. However, the moon's small size meant that the core started losing heat very rapidly. Additionally, the core makes up just 20% of the volume of the moon, unlike 50%, like on Earth. It continues to cool even today, and as it cools, it shrinks. Much like a raisin, its structure then starts to have deformities. Some of these deformities occur in the form of scarps. When the support from the underlying mantle is gone, the surface tends to rupture. Scarps are cliff-like structures that are formed when one portion of the crust suddenly rises up. Scarps have been extensively imaged by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, which has been in the lunar orbit since 2009. Combining the seismic data and the location of these quakes with these images of scarps from LRO gave the scientists a new perspective. This brings us to the second thing that we know about the Moon. This has to do with the lunar orbit. As the moon goes around the Earth in orbit, it reaches a farthest point called the apogee in its orbit before which it turns back and heads towards the Earth. And now the data made sense. When the moon is at its apogee, it feels the gravitational tug of the Earth the strongest. Furthermore, at its apogee, it also slows down, causing incremental effects of gravity to cascade. Just like the moon's gravitational pull causes tides on Earth, the Earth's gravity also affects the moon, but on the surface. The Earth's gravitational pull tends to contribute very heavily to formation of scarps and other deformities that occur on the surface of the moon. This, in turn, causes these shallow quakes. These quakes are not weak. Some of them measured over 5 on the Richter scale, and that is enough to cause damage here on Earth to buildings. In a low-gravity environment like the Moon, that can potentially be very deadly. It is imperative for us to understand the mechanism and patterns of these lunar quakes and figure out when and where they occur. This is not just to understand the formation and evolution of the Earth-Moon system, but also to ensure our own safety as humanity plans to go back to the Moon eventually. This is Sandhya Ramesh from Bengaluru for The Print.